Well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Make yourself at home. Have a drink. While I give some attention to some underappreciated characters and storylines that I personally love. And I hope you grow to love as well. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Matt's Minis. Today we're doing Saga of Swamp Thing number 12. And we are moving right along. Uh, <laughs> it seems like the series went from uh, being kind of dark and interesting for the last two issues. And now it's getting convoluted and uh, full of more story again. Uh, as it seemed to be wrapping up this like witch or demon uh, confrontation about like the number of the beast and everything. Um, so, uh, yeah, for, for, for all of you who are, who are, you know, maybe the first time listening to this episode, we got a, you got a lot of backstory you got to follow. So you might have to go back a couple, uh, episodes and listen to those just to catch up on where we're at. But even the comic itself, I noticed, uh, has a lot of, uh, last time on, you know, like it'll, it'll recap some stuff because there's a lot of, a lot of cogs in this machine, you know, like, just a lot of things going on that are kind of like it's a person balancing a bunch of plates kind of seeming like so uh you know Mar martin pasco is trying you know he's he's got he's got a story that's pretty detailed and he wants to tell it god damn it and it's gonna be however long it needs to be so uh right right here first uh first things first on the cover we got swamp thing looking like he's possessed on a bridge and he is about to throw liz tremaine off the bridge and uh looks like Dr. Barclay has a torch and is trying to fight him off or stop him from doing that. So, uh, pretty action filled cover. And then also it's in, it's in, that is outlined by a scope, like a gun scope, which is pointed, you know, the crosshairs are on Swamp Thing's chest. So he looks like he's about to get shot. So a lot, lots of stuff going on. Um, and we see right away, Kind of just like uh, most of the issues, we're picking right back up where the last one uh, ended. Swamp Thing is fighting a golem on a mountaintop. And uh, the golem is trying to get him because he's got Casey's uh, uh, like locket that she gave him. and Which it makes him psych psychically tied to Casey and the golem wants to kill Casey. So it's confused. It's like, oh, I feel Casey on you so I'm going to attack you. Even though Swamp Thing's not evil. It's just the amulet, so or the uh, the locket, but uh, he's like, man, I can't get this thing off of me. It's like grown into my uh, root systems and everything, so he can't just like pull the. He can't tell his roots to like move or anything. He just he's got to figure out how to how to get it out of there. <laughs> so, uh, but they're falling down a mountain basically, like while this is happening, and uh, we see the name of this issue is called "And Yet It Lives." Uh, once again, like I said, by Martin Pasco and uh, Tom Yeats is the artist. And, um, he, it's funny cause in the last issue, they'll say things that don't necessarily seem like they matter. So I won't bring them up and then they end up mattering in like four issues later. So, uh, in the last issue they were talking about, Oh, when I, when we make golems, um, all you gotta do is write in the name, uh, I think it's like Emmett or something on the front of it on its face. And then if you want to stop it, you have to just erase the first letter which is uh, E, so it just say Met after that. Um, and Swamp Thing remembers that while he's falling down. He's like, oh, yeah, didn't the Jewish guy say all you have to do is erase the first letter? Now, the good thing is Swamp Thing knows about Hebrew because he erases it from uh, right to left. So <laughs> he knows that in Hebrew you read right to left instead of left to right like in English. So he erases the correct letter and it's, it stops it dead. So, um, now he's like able to win, uh, and there's like, they're on a cliff and he's, it's like not her trying to hurt him anymore. So then, uh, Dr. K, uh, is looking at this and, you know, they don't see Swamp Thing anymore. He's so far down, but you know, he starts remembering all the stuff. And that's why I saying like, he's recapping all these things about, uh, Car or Casey and who also known as Karen Clancy and, uh, this girl that has grown up to be the usher in of the uh antichrist um and the herald of the antichrist they say and she will bring in you know uh the armageddon so um as uh as he's thinking about this we see swamp thing and he's like he comes up and he's like kind of surprises him he's like it's over your golem is dead and uh he like pulls himself up he's like no thanks to you guys <laughs> thanks for the help you know no worry i'll handle this fucking golem over here 
And uh, so, right, as he's standing up, all of a sudden there's like a, it says a telepathic, uh, like a psionic attack happens. And um, everybody, all the Jewish guys, which is Dr. K, Milton, his psychic companion, and also an older Jewish dude who showed up, like who we don't really know, and Paul Feldman. So they all get attacked by like a psionic attack. Swamp Thing's attacked too, but he doesn't seem like he's in pain. Everybody else seems like they're in pain. And so um, she's talking to them and she's like, uh, she's showing them images in their head. And she's like, if you want to try to challenge me, uh, you can come here. And, uh, you know, that's, that's where I'm going to like fight my last stand, I guess. And what it is, is the synagogue that Dr. K went to when he was a kid. So he's like trying to, I guess she's trying to piss off Dr. K even more. Um, then we cut back to the hotel where, uh, Liz Tremaine and Dr. Barclay are staying. They, they were not part of this whole like big fight because, you know, they're just humans. The other guys, you know, they were Jewish Kabbalists who could raise golems and at least try to fight Casey and Swamp Thing, Swamp Thing. So, you know, he could try to fight Casey, but Dr. Barclay, he's just a scientist and Liz Tremaine is just a reporter. So they weren't on, uh, the case as far as they weren't. Um, in that big fight. So, uh, the interesting thing is there's only one bed in this place and, uh, Liz Tremaine can't sleep because this guy, Dr. Barclay, he, uh, he got all the lights on. He's looking through his books. He's getting all pissed. He's throwing his notes around, throwing his pencils. He's all mad because he can't come up with, uh, an antidote for Swamp Thing. And what we found out last issue is Swamp Thing basically has a real bad case of a coli. Uh, some special kind of a coli and uh, it's killing him, eating him away on the inside. And uh, he says, if it goes unchecked, it'll kill him within two months. And I'm so mad and all I need is some kind of certain antibiotics and that should kill, you know, cure him. But I wish I could do better. And then he like realizes, oh shit, like you, you haven't been able to sleep this whole time, have you? And she's just like sitting around in like a bathrobe, like naked underneath. So she's also like kind of flirting with him, but also not. Uh, cause she seems to like not want to be with him, uh, necessarily, uh, in that way romantically, but he's getting mixed signals. Cause he's like, Oh, you know what? I'll just go sleep in the, the subway and let you have the bed. You know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to like keep you up. And she's like the subway. No, it's fine. I'm not afraid of you. Cause he, he thinks she's afraid of him. Cause she, he's like, he's having nom flashbacks in the last couple issues and stuff. <laughs> and he was all like mad at her and yelling at her about it because she was like, you know, how dare these war vets do whatever. And he's like, I'm a war vet. And <laughs> he was all angry, like defending war vets. So, uh, she, he thinks that she's mad at him or at least scared of him. He, she's like, no, I'm not scared of you. What are you trying to say? And so then the, this is the best thing ever. Like, like Barclay's like, uh, you know, maybe I'm not, a, you're not afraid of me, but I mean, we've been together constantly for almost three weeks now and I'm starting to feel the strain. So basically he's getting horny. He's getting horny for Liz Tremaine. And she's like, what are you saying? And he's like, you don't, you don't pick up on it. Uh, damn it, Liz, you're one hell of a beautiful woman and I admire you. I admire your guts, your style. Uh, he does he says that, but as he's saying that, he's taking off his shirt in a very seductive way. And, um, and she goes, oh, so you, you think you're falling in love with me? Is that it? And, uh, <laughs> he just, he comes over to her all, all sly, all, uh, slick. And he's like, she's, she starts covering herself, by the way, like her before, like her chest was kind of open in this, uh, bathrobe that she's wearing nothing underneath. And, uh. He just kind of comes over and like puts his hands on her shoulders, but and stands behind her, and uh, <laughs> basically she's like, "No, like you don't want me. Like you're nice and everything, but like you don't understand how you feel because like you you're you've gone gone through uh, what does she call it? She says you're going through the syndrome, I believe. Um, and so she's talking about like she's like she's like you were in Nam. Have you forgotten the syndrome? So she's talking about like PTSD that he suffered. And like basically saying, that's why you love me right now is because, um, you know, you spend enough time with anybody because you're trapped in like a living nightmare in your head. Like you'll end up loving them because, you know, you just want companionship to get away from that nightmare. And, um, she's like, 
you know, so you'll reach out to whoever's there, right? That's not love. That's desperation. Like, Dennis, you're a nice guy and everything, but and he's like, give yourself some credit for having more to offer than a Saigon bar girl, huh? And uh, he, <laughs> then she starts saying, well, it has been a long time since I've been with anyone. Uh, you know, if anything did happen between us, I'd want it to happen because you really wanted it and not just because I was handy or the only person here. And he's like, sure, baby, sure. And like, he starts like nuzzling her neck and then, uh, there's a knock on the door and we're like, what the heck? And then, uh, she's like, well, I, I gotta go get that. Hold on a second. So <laughs> she like stops and then goes over to the door and, uh, who is it? But Dr. Grasp, the bad guy from the original, like first two issues, and we, I guess she doesn't know who he is. She's never met him, and neither has Dr. Barclay. And so he's like, Vandava, uh, guten tag. I'm here to investigate some complaining. And, uh, you know, he's pretending to be German. And then, like, as she unlocks the door, he's like, you idiot, Miss Tremaine. Like, you, you think you're so sophisticated, but you can't even spot a phony German accent when you hear it and uh, I don't know why <laughs> why he so why he thought she would like be able to tell that but whatever and Dr. Barclay's what what's going on who are you and uh he's about to attack him but then Dr. Grass pulls out a gun and is like you know what I work for someone you used to work for you know the Sunderland Corporation uh you might remember and they also call me Dr. Grasp or just Grasp um, which I don't know why they call him that anymore. Cause before I think they called him cause he had robot arms and then he came back to life after they healed his wounds with a new body. And I'm assuming he had hands again. So, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. He's still wearing gloves. So he has not revealed his robot arms since the second issue. So then we cut to, uh, the Sunderland corporation and we see Dr. Sunderland, He's got a report uh, that, he, that uh, his secretary is bringing in. And actually, it's a file. It's a file um, on the Swamp Thing. Um, he says, she says, you wanted the Swamp Thing file, General? And he's like, uh, no, just keep it handy for any updates, uh, you know, Dr. Or Dr. Grasp has from, the, uh, from when he questions Liz Tremaine. Because basically, he gets word that from Grasp, oh, yeah, we got Liz Tremaine and we got Dr. Barclay. And they'll tell me where Swamp Thing is. So... Then we cut to back to uh, the the lodge where the um, the golem that has now been recovered by the Jewish guys, and Doctor K takes the locket off Swamp Thing. Who I he like has to cut his roots. He can't just like make his roots go in and out or grow or whatever or, or like you know deform or anything. So they actually have to cut it out of his roots on his chest, and they're like, okay, well you know we'll do this time. Um, as this energy from this locket obviously like calls it to her, um, and makes it think like, oh, whoever's wearing it's evil. We'll just put it on the golem and that'll fix it. <laughs> so if we put the locket on the golem, it'll help it track her. And then also like, that's all we got to do. Like, we'll just put, you know, re, re, uh, put the word on its head in the correct order. And, uh, yeah, we'll just follow it to the synagogue. So they go to do that, and then we cut back to the hotel. And Barclay tries to start asking questions to Grasp. But Grasp was like, nah, I'm the one who's in, like, the position to ask questions. So none of you can, like, say shit to me. And um, so then, like, Barclay it says, Dennis's eyes waver slightly. It's a silent code, an urgent unspoken command. So he's looking at Liz and Liz is looking at him and she gets it. She's like, I know exactly what to do. Um, and then she like starts to take off her shoe and Dr. Barclay like goes backing up towards the desk where, uh, or his desk where the lamp was. And then he starts to attack grasp with the lamp and grasp shoots the lamp stand with a gun and it like, I guess disappears. I don't know. It goes out it, like it's, it's zapped and then it's gone from his hand. So, I guess his laser gun makes it disappear, but she actually uh, hits him on the head. Like he's like, "You're a fool, Barclay. Uh, I have a like laser gun that can zap you into nothing." And she's like, "Oh yeah, well here's a shoe to the head." And she like, <laughs> knocks Doctor Grasp in the head, and then Barclay is able to give him the one-two punch and knock uh, Grasp out. And so uh, 
like basically they're like wow i can't believe us non-pros was able to do that to a professional killer here that's lucky <laughs> and so then we cut to um uh the dr k and everybody and they're in a, a car and they're driving up to that synagogue where casey is uh where he, she like taunted them to follow her and he's got a radio so they got a radio too and they're they're like talking to him and they're like hey just so you know sunderland's man was here he tried to kill me his name is grasp and they're like, oh, man, I can't believe you were able to beat him, but good job. And they're like, hey, we're going to come up there, too. And uh, Dr. K is like, no, you can't come up here, Dr. Barclay. It's too dangerous, and it doesn't have anything to do with you. Like, literally, there's no reason for you to come up here. You're humans. You can't do anything. And then they're like, no, we have to, like, be with you guys, too. So they're like, all right, do whatever you want. So <laughs> they're, I guess, headed that way. Uh, we don't see them leave or anything, but maybe they're headed on the way to the synagogue as well and then um we find like all the jewish people are asking questions of uh i guess dr k like how do you know so much about all this and what's going on and uh and basically he starts having like a breakdown about his past you know helping the nazis um even though he says he was like um treating the prisoners for scurvy and malnutrition you know he he was eating meat while they were eating you know nothing and all this stuff so just because he was helping the nazis uh while trying to like live he feels bad for that so um but then you know as he's crying about it they get there they arrive at the synagogue and it's on fire she's already started to burn it down you got some jewish people or townsfolk running out and the golem is uh, just a little bit ahead of him, so he's he's kind of running in. And uh, right away, Casey comes at them. They're, like, in a forested area. And the golem, like, pushes a tree over and kind of, like, hits her down. And, like, she shoots a beam at him, and he just blocks it with, his, uh, with the tree that he took over. And then all of a sudden, the other Jewish guys, they got laser beams coming out of their eyes. So they start shooting her with their laser beams. And that knocks her out. And uh, they're like debating whether she should die or not. And Swamp Thing's like, no, you can't kill her. And like in his head, he's having this thing, like this back and forth. And then he he just kind of stops. And he's like, or can he kill her? So like they're like, like basically they want the golem to kill her. Um, and Swamp Thing's like, maybe he can. And then in his head, he's like, he's like, let that thing kill her, Holland. Uh, you wanted to yourself only a few hours ago. Uh, like, basically, she would already be dead, right? Like, if he hadn't intervened. So, like, it's fine. And then it says, he does not resist, does not even recoil. As above the cracking of looking flame, there is the sound of curses in a language unknown on earth. Then the sound of bone snapping. So the golem snaps Casey's body in half and kills her. Um, and I'm not going to lie. This part's a little hard to figure out exactly what happens, but I mean, she's broken in half by the golem for sure. And then it says there's a scream that happens and she lets out like the last of her powers. And we see Milton kind of, I guess gets evaporated and um, the other older Jewish guy and one of the other Jewish guys. So, I think three of the Jewish guys are down and the golem gets hit with it as well, but he doesn't die. And then uh, the golem, I guess now having defeated her, walks away and is not, is not part of this anymore. Or that's what it looks like, at least. He just kind of walks off into the woods. and uh, But we still have Dr. Paul Feldman and K, Dr. K, and another Jewish guy that was with them. And, uh, and Swamp Thing. So they're at the synagogue that's burning down right now. And they see, like, all these four dead people on the ground. And uh, basically, Swamp Thing is just like, oh, my God, I can't believe all these people are dead. This is crazy. Um, and, like, all these consequences were fatal. And, you know, it, it's basically cra crazy. And then, so, you know, I, I said, oh, I wasn't sure if uh, Dr. Barclay and Liz Tremaine were on their way yet or not. Well, they are because they pulled up. That was real quick. I don't know where the synagogue is in relation to Munich, but they came real quick. And um, 
and he's and Doctor Barclay is running out of the car, and he's like, "Alec, I think I've isolated the thing that's killing you. I've brought antibiotics." Um, and then and then uh, the Jew or Doctor K says, uh, "One moment, Dennis. Much has happened here, but the most importantly." The golem has disappeared. So I guess the golem does disappear. <laughs> Just walks into the woods and disappears. I guess his mission was finished. Now he finally snapped the back of Casey, who was possessed by a demon. And so now, I guess a couple, you know, maybe a half hour later or something, they're all driving in that uh, same car all together now. And I guess they have the body of Casey in the car and they're explaining to uh, Liz Tremaine and Dr. Barclay what happened. So it just starts off saying, and so Dennis, my men died to enable the golem to kill the girl. So I guess that's what Milton and the other uh, Jewish guys that were there, they gave their power to the golem, which let the golem kill the girl. And uh, so they gave their lives for that. And um, then, but we see like in the car, I guess she's somewhere, I don't know, in the trunk, I guess. Um, so, uh, Casey is in the trunk, her dead body is, and something's coming out of her mouth and it's like a spirit, like a demon spirit coming out. It's got horns. It's got a big, like, you know, wingspan, um, and it's coming out of her. And then we also see Dr. Grasp is on like a higher peak on another part of the road. And he is, uh, he's got a rifle and he's pointing at the car and we see the demon like swirling in the car and like around it, but I don't know if he can see it or not. Um, he just says like, uh, you know, I can't see anything. Um, he can't fire till they get off the bridge because he needs to like verify the kill of the bodies. He doesn't want to lose them in the stream. So he wouldn't normally have a problem with that if it was just like, you know, a little embankment or something. But um, then... Uh, so, like, that demon's flying around. I don't think anyone can actually see it except us. But then all of a sudden, we get, like, an evil dead moment. We're out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, the voice of Karen comes out, and it's coming out of Liz Tremaine. So, Liz Tremaine has just got possessed by a demon, uh, the one that was inside of Casey. And uh, it's like, I live, Holland. Death is but a caterpillar shedding its cocoon and escape from imprisonment. And so uh, it jerks the car's wheel to the left, or I should say Liz Tremaine's body does it, uh, and it makes them crash. The car flips. Everybody is okay, but she is freaking out and flying all over the place. And uh, Swamp Thing is kind of freaking out. He's like, um, he's like, I can't believe Karen still exists. Uh, like, he's taking over my friend's body, and, like, I, I won't let her do this. And... Um, so Dr. Barclay, he's got a torch. He's getting the torch ready. But what what's going on is I guess Swamp Thing grabs Liz Tremaine's body, you know, who's possessed now. And I guess the demon doesn't have to stay inside of anybody it doesn't want him. So it jumps from Liz to Swamp Thing and because obviously that's a stronger body to fight Dr. Barclay off. And um, you know, it starts trying to throw Liz Tremaine off the uh bridge. And uh, Barclay is not letting it. He's like trying to burn Swamp Thing with the fire. And uh, then they both fall. And like Barclay gets kicked while like I guess Liz and Swamp Thing fall over. Um, it, it's weird. Like the fight's not super choreographed. But this is the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> we have a moment where Swamp Thing, he's aware. He's inside uh, or he's inside his body still, like inside his head, even though the demon's in there. So he understands what must be done. And the demon's like inside of him saying all this stuff about like, uh, you know, basically like <laughs> confirming that like the religious stuff works against it. Like it's like, you know, uh, now that you know all these secrets about like Kabbalah and uh, religious mysticism, like you have a better chance of defeating me this time. And so Swamp Thing, I guess, gets the idea. He's like, no, like basically I, I won't let you destroy us. And he gets the idea. If, I don't like, I don't know if you watched the exorcist or something, but he's like, you Karen, whatever you are inside me in the name of God, I cast you out. <laughs> and so he, he pulls like straight up out of the Bible, uh, exorcism just in the name of, of God, uh, I compel you. And so <laughs> He, and it works. Uh, the, the demon like casts out of him 
um and he can't it like can't stay inside of him it says it says hence the entity that was once caring cannot remain in in this hostile environment and so um but it says uh liz is gone and so is the locket uh and like basically the entity like abducted liz and then we see her like floating away while they're like uh while like the demons kind of shooting them with like an energy beam or something and there's a lot of stuff going on that's not fully explained here <laughs> and then um like while they're they're swallowed by the light they can't move or do anything uh, while it's like teleporting her away and then also grasp he's like oh sweet like i can fire but uh he can't because he's also swallowed by the light it says and so um then then it just disappears and everybody's like transported into different areas <laughs> like weird areas i don't know exactly where um they like it says uh, there's a long silence and all of a sudden Holland and company company are already more than a dozen miles away. And so, uh, it says basically they've been transported, transported back to, uh, Casey's stronghold, which is like that, uh, castle that she raised, I think out of Dachau, uh, she like raised that out of, out of the memorial area that that was in. Um, and so, uh, but everybody's now in this place. So even we see Dr. Grasp has been transported there and, um, uh, like Dr. K, Dr. Barclay. We also see the golem is here and he's like, what the heck? Why is the golem alive? Um, like that's so weird. And then, and then we, we get like a voiceover of the, of the demon and it says, welcome all of you here. You will meet my master he whom your sacred writings call the beast the antichrist i shall help him achieve his destiny he shall become a powerful world leader and deliver the earth into the hands of the entity you call satan you will soon meet the beast again you see you know him uh as it is written he has a number and the number is 666 so basically there's like this voice the which is the voice of the demon inside of liz tremaine is saying that the like we already know who this guy is and uh then we cut to uh dr or general sunderland in the sunderland tower and he's like hey miss hammond do you have that report from grasp yet he's overdue and she's like i'll check the computer general let's see if there's a message from him and then uh he, we're looking at the computer and it says you know um file title you know code grasp and it says file code 666 so i guess they're assuming they're implying that grasp is the antichrist which is weird and interesting um so yeah and now it says next the final conflict inside the fortress of the beast so hopefully next issue will be the wrap-up of this long storyline that has gone on for far too long, but is kind of interesting sometimes. And right now it's, it's intriguing a little bit. So, um, I hope all you guys are on, on me with, or with me on this one. I know it's, uh, it's this storyline specifically is running pretty long. It's on like 12 issues, which most storylines don't last that long. So, um, but if you guys got any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can email me at plans, trains, and comic books on one word at gmail.com. And until next time, stay swampy. Thank you.